All right, I am back, although briefly, as I will be sending my microphone in to take advantage of the warranty, as I've never really been satisfied with the new microphone. It always seems to have distortion, no matter what settings I'm using. And after sending in an audio clip to the company, they tend to agree that there's probably something wrong with the microphone. So they're going to check it out. But I will have some downtime because of it. Now, unless this takes over a month, this will not affect laws of Magic subscribers. Speaking of which, I've had a few people in the new class email me about not receiving their lessons. Make sure you check your Gumroad library from a PC and click on the link instead of the picture. As Gumroad has told me that the ones that they've investigated are in fact sitting in the library. I try to keep the file sizes down, but, but that does not mean that they are all mobile friendly. Kind of an oversight on my part. Yet, it's difficult to anticipate every single mobile platform out there. So, just make sure that you check with your PC first. And lastly, I want to put out the reminder that today is the last day for Manifesting Reality promo codes. It will be going back up to regular price tomorrow. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into it. I was watching a documentary on Aleister Crowley recently, and in it, there was a couple of parts. One where he was talking about AC's membership in the Golden Dawn, and how he met an adept member of the Golden Dawn who was desperate for money. This man's name was Alan Bennett. At the time Crowley met this man, he was very poor and needed money badly. He was living in poverty and needed money so that he could move into a warmer climate country to deal with his asthma. Even though he knew it was wrong to do so, he accepted money from Crowley, and in return, Alan Bennett would teach Aleister Crowley everything he knew. And so there you have it, a man that knew it was wrong to teach magic for money, and yet did it anyway. Even so, this man actually had a fairly good reason for doing something, which any magician worth his wand and robe would be absolutely ashamed to do. Alan Bennett may have broken this cardinal rule of magicians. However, he would have likely died in England of his asthma if he did not. So I can see why he sort of had to break this rule. Even in the Golden Dawn initiation, you are required to promise to never teach magic for money. Uh, well, the Golden Dawn actually does teach magic for money. If you go to their website and or YouTube channel, they are advertising teaching you magic for money. They may not want you to do it, but the organization itself is doing it. But we'll get back to that. I find it quite disturbing and odd when I come to YouTube and see a man who is not desperate for money who considers himself an adept magician selling his teachings for money. It is one thing when you need money or you are going to die to do such a thing. Also, only doing it when you absolutely have to and have no other alternative. However, when you make a profitable business out of doing something that is really filthy, like selling holy knowledge for money, that is just disgusting and unethical. I know you probably do not care and have already justified it to yourself. Even so, I hope this will at least get you to think that you may be in some way helping to teach another rich self-centered asshole who is going to use the powers of magic for his own selfish benefit and do nothing but harm to humanity around him. Maybe you will at least consider that you may end up going down in history as the next Alan Bennett. I respect everything else about you aside from that one thing. I still do hope that you prosper 
and that only those with good intentions and who will use the knowledge properly and in a good way only by your teachings. It's unlikely, but I can only hope for the best. I do not know if you will somehow be cosmically held responsible for the actions of those who you teach and go on to abuse that knowledge you have taught them. Who knows for sure if there is truth to that. Either way, it is still wrong to teach magic for money, in my opinion. I am actually interested in hearing what your views are on selling magic teachings for money. I mean, I know you do agree with it, but what are your views on those who think it is wrong? Do you think it can lead to creating monsters, so to say, out of people who otherwise would have been fairly normal human beings otherwise more than likely. I mean, the entire, most of the members of the Golden Dawn found it a repugnant idea to sell magic teachings for money. What do you think of their views? And I also got this message from the same person a while before. Not really sure why I should pay money for your online course when I can learn everything you have taught in your videos from the Kabbalion plus Donald Michael Craig's book, Modern Magic. Just curious what makes your course worth paying my hard-earned money for when all of the information in it is already available on the internet. Not trying to offend you or anything, just want to know if it's really worth my money and why. And here's one from another viewer. I despise capitalism, but we got to face the facts. You are right. You put a lot of effort in acquiring knowledge, and it's undeniable the need for money to live in society. Sure, it's not just right to sell the knowledge, but honorable as well. There is no letdown on getting money for it. People who complain just don't give value to such knowledge and should not bother to come here to learn something. After all, they don't value what is there to learn from you. Of course, you deserve the compensation for sharing. Thanks, my friend. I hope you acquire what you're looking for. Well, that's kind of capitalism. But <laughs> All right, I'm going to answer all of this. But the point is, is I get messages from time to time from people who think it's wrong to sell magic knowledge or have problems with spiritual people having money, making money, etc. And I want to help you understand that it's your very attitudes about money that keep you from money. And so we need to back it up a bit. Actually, we need to back it up a lot. Now, I've already explained how everything is a circuit, including money. That it needs to flow out for it to flow in, and vice versa. So we're not going to go over that again. No, we need to back up all the way to the beginning. All the way back to the neophyte grade where you had to focus on a point for six to ten months. And we just stare at the point and consider the point. What is the point? The point is everything. The point represents many things. But first and foremost, it represents perspective. Because everything else that follows is going to stem from that point. And this is what we mean by everything starts in the mind. Because your mind is that starting point. Everything that manifests in your life comes from that starting point. However, that point can be in different places. If you are a Democrat, you are said to have a liberal point of view. If you're a Republican, you have a conservative point of view. Your point can be on the left or the right, or it could be in the middle. Remember when Obi-Wan Kenobi tells Luke that many of the truths that we cling to rely solely upon our own point of view. And politics is just an example. It's that way with everything, including money. It's your point of view about money that's going to determine your financial life. You now we have this guy worried that we're going to be creating other rich assholes, which is a typical stereotype 
that people without a lot of money have of people who have money. Are there a lot of rich assholes out there? Sure. Are there a lot of friendly, wealthy people as well? Absolutely. They just don't associate or hang out with people who don't have money. Because to do so would be to compromise their mindset about money. That and the people without money are very judgmental and will always be looking at their money. Instead of asking them, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to do to become wealthy like you? And then we have those who feel it's wrong to teach magic for money. But those same people wouldn't have a problem with you doing magic for money as a spell for someone. But if you teach them, then that's wrong. You know, and to me, that's like, it's okay to give a man a fish to eat for a day, but it's wrong to teach him to fish and feed himself for a lifetime. I personally would rather teach people to do for themselves because we're all doing magic whether we know it or not, so why not teach them the right way to do it? Everyone has these abilities. They just need to develop the skills, but we'll get back to that. So, in order to do well with money, we need to have the correct point of view or perspective about money. And in order to do so, we need to know what money is. What is money? Now, most people would say that it is a unit of exchange that can be traded for goods and services. And while that's true, that is a secondary almost a byproduct of money. In order to understand what money is, I'm going to share a blog post from another magician who did an evocation of a goetic demon king who is largely associated with money. I will not say this demon's name because when you say names, you get attention. But his number is nine. I ask that the spirit would reveal to me the arts of business, the science of economy, and the secret of money itself. The spirit replied that the principle of supply and demand is a lie, but that demand and fulfillment is the rule. It is not the money that counts, but the willingness of others to follow. One gains not money, but service, and that willingly. At some point in any business, you have a core group of individuals who simply agree to participate, and the idea of profit is simply a side effect and a means of controlling the others involved who would not be otherwise willing participants. Money given to one man allows his position to be coveted and his assets exploited, then accomplishing the same with others. No profit is given to those whose work is exchanged. They are the makers of profit. They are owned until others willingly complete their wishes. This spirit is suggesting it is not the money that is gained, but the service of others in which the cash or credit is merely a token. The spirit spoke further. Men are thus enslaved by my legions, whose temptations outweigh all others. I am not served by fools and beggars and the insane. But all others desire my coin, even you. I am bound to you here, but in all other ways you are subject to my slaves. I requested exemption from this subjugation, to be released from it, and to be set over those who would use me to their advantage at my own expense. The Spirit continued, I am pleased to do this, for in binding they become further brought under my workers. The promise of gain for one is threat for others. But my way is afforded willingly. Men plead with me, and my pleasure is to ensnare any. I asked how this worked. Position is surety of obedience. Requirement of service is poverty. And fear of loss is equal to demand and punishment. But the monarch commands all pay is his own. Surety 
means a security against losses. So the spirit is declaring that one is held by a position inasmuch as one holds it. Poverty, according to the spirit, is not a lack of funds, but a greater amount of obligation. One must do more when he has less. Certainly a poor man without a computer or car has a harder time managing his affairs than one who can click for information or to take care of personal business online. Instead of outright punishment, the spirit suggests people are kept in line by the threat of greater demand placed upon them, rather than actually being afraid of losing anything. In the case of the overpaid executive, it is the low-brow cliché that he would have to go out and find a real job, not the fear that he may lose his Ferrari that motivates him to do as his career demands. Simply put, money is influence. A measure of exchange is merely a byproduct of money, when it is really a unit of measure for influence. Now, with this perspective, should the spiritual person or the magician have the least influence? Or should they have the most influence? Or at least be continually working towards having greater influence? That there's progress. See, most people's point of view, their perspective of money, is backwards. And then they wonder why they have problems with money. This is an area where one needs to achieve balance. You should be achieving balance in all things, or at least strive to achieve balance. To be too materialistic without spirituality will not be very fulfilling. And because of polarity and duality, being strictly spiritual and shunning the material is just as equally extreme. It's just the opposite polarity of being too material. Both are undesirable. For if you are going to be strictly spiritual and shun the material, then why are you even here? You were born into this physical realm. You have to deal with physicality and the material. So for those who say that the magician or the spiritual person should not have money or material things is absolutely ridiculous. The magician is always striving to increase his influence. That's what the visualization during the Kabbalistic cross of you growing larger than the universe itself is doing, is increasing your aura and your area of influence. Now, on the subject of teaching magic for money, magic is what I love to do. It is my calling. It is in my chart to do magic and to teach magic. I want you to go back to the lesson on the root of all evil and watch that one again because we said that the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money itself, but the love of money to where it pulls you off of your path and your purpose and gets you to do things you wouldn't normally do. Influence. How many people do you know or are listening right now that are working a job that they absolutely cannot stand? That if it wasn't for the money, they would not work there. That, my friends, is the evil of money. And it's those people who are caught up in it, who have been pulled from their purpose and their path and their passions, and why I always stress it's so important to find yours. I am following mine while teaching you how to do the same by using the principles to follow your dreams and your life's purpose while using magic to help achieve that. Now, the person who wrote that first message wanted to know what I thought about his view. And based upon what he's written, I would say that he has a disempowering view of money and magic. He's worried that monsters are going to be created, that there's going to be more rich assholes out there. 
And that's a pretty negative view of people in general. Now, I do a lot of work to keep this information strictly for those who it's meant for. And let's be real, most of those people who only have a passing fancy and a get-rich-quick attitude will not have the patience to sit through all of my videos. <laughs> my most popular video by far is the How to Win the Lottery Using Magic. Far more views than any other video I have. And those who viewed it only because they wanted to know how to win the lottery were probably severely disappointed and did not bother to watch any of my other videos. Subscribers, on the other hand, are not just concerned with money. They want to know all the aspects of magic and in self-development. You say that you find teaching magic for money is unethical and disgusting when I have the exact opposite perspective. I find it a beautiful thing to help empower others. It is the prosperous man who wants others to prosper. It is only the greedy and those in scarcity that want others to not be prosperous. And you need to examine which point of view you have. You say you don't want any more rich assholes. If this is your default view of people with money, then you're going to have a serious problem with money. Because if you think of others that way, you're really thinking of yourself that way. And that will keep you from money. Because you don't want to be another rich asshole on the subconscious level. On the flip side, if you have money and you don't want other people to learn how to get money through magic and keep them in poverty, then you're just being greedy and are already the rich asshole. So which is it? You need to examine your point of view, your starting point, your perspective, if you want to have more money and influence. I believe wholeheartedly in the win-win situation for both me and my students by helping them empower their lives, helping them to become more successful, more prosperous, and spreading that prosperity, thereby making the world a better place. See, it's all in the perspective. It's all in the point of view that you have to have a little bit more faith in people. I get countless messages all the time by people who are grateful for what I'm teaching. None of them seem like assholes to me. <laughs> As for your other questions, all of which I appreciate, by the way, because people need to learn this. People need to know this. How are you going to have more money if you don't understand money and don't have the correct perspective about it? It all stems from that. But as for your other questions, I'm a solitary practitioner, and I've worked out of the book Kabbalah, Magic, and the Great Work of Self-Transformation by Liam Thomas Christopher. Nowhere in that book does it say you cannot sell magical knowledge for money. I mean, how could it? It's a book that he's selling for money, and it's a very empowering book. Believe it or not, people do sell empowering things. Bob Proctor, he sells his courses. It's not magic per se, but it is using the seven hermetic principles. It's the same thing without the hocus pocus, utilizing the subconscious mind. And so I don't have any oaths or promises or knowledge of the inner workings of the Golden Dawn organization. I do know that they sell their knowledge on their site and on their YouTube videos and have done so very recently. You also asked why you should pay money for my course when you can learn everything from the Kabbalion and Donald Michael Craig's Modern Magic book. Um, first off, that's not true. There are many things that I teach that are not in Modern Magic or the Kabbalion. And vice versa. I'm sure there's a lot of things that I've skipped over that are in those books. 
That said, I'm not much of a salesman. If you feel you shouldn't get the course, then you shouldn't. If you feel you should, then you should. If you want to spend your time searching online and sifting through the pieces yourself, there's nothing wrong with that. I've had to do plenty of that myself. But understand that there's two types of currency. There's money and there's time. Of which time is the most valuable. Because once spent, you can never regain it. Also, not all the information online is very good. In fact, some of it is quite terrible. <laughs> the point is, you're paying for the information either way. With money or your time. And as for the person who wrote in expressing their agreement, for a lack of a better word, on teaching magic for money, I would say, yeah, but it's not just limited to magic. Anything that you love to do, your purpose and your passion, where you've gained knowledge and developed a specific skill set, is where you need to be making your money. If you're not making money from your life's calling, there's something wrong. <laughs> because if you're not making money, you're not gaining influence. And if you're not gaining prosperity and influence in your life's calling, then what's the point? Again, I ask you, what's your point? I'll see you next time. Take care.